So now I'm joined by Colin and we're going to be discussing the MTD network. It's lovely to be with you, Colin. I must admit your videos are very funny. They do make me laugh. I said that first thing this morning. Funny, educational and entertaining. Yes, yes, I'd agree. Right, okay. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I went on the website was this here, RFQs. So tell me a little bit more. I, I think of that as request for qu quotation. Absolutely. Can you explain more. Right. When engineers join MTD Network, they said, are you going to get some business? Are you going to get some, some inquiries? Yes, we absolutely are. So RFQs. And you've seen on the, on the website there. Yep. I'll show you that. Oh, it's this side here, yes. So top right-hand corner. So people, JLR, Baker Perkins, anybody can go to that site and say, I need these components manufactured, put the details in. That will then go out to engineers on MTD Network. Simple as that. Wow, so you're bridging the gap between everyone. You Absolutely. are the network that is bridging the gap between yep. a job yep. and an engineering Certainly. shop. That's incredible. Yeah. But also, people, you know, engineers say, well, you know, you're just a directory. No, that's where we differ, and we massively differ for a number of different reasons. A, we've been digital marketing for almost 10 years now, so we know our side in terms of the website and getting information out. Yeah. We've got over 50 years' experience in the engineering industry, so we know what we're talking about. Um, but we're also promoting the engineers, so, you know, it's well and good getting the inquiries coming in, but how do you get their name out to market? So we do your videos, we do um, up, provide details about what they've been up to, you know, manufacturing components, if they've taken on apprentices and things like that. So we get that out to the market and we'll do an email to a database of over 70,000 people so people will find out about what our engineers are doing. I quite like as well, and there's one point I, I really do want to mention is, I love your educational videos. So if you're an engineer and you may, maybe you've got a question on something, your videos are brilliant for this. Oh, that was my eureka moment, that was. Ah. Because I was chatting to one of my colleagues, Paul. It's normally Paul Jones TV, but on this occasion it was Colin's Idea TV. I asked him what EDM was, and he sat there for a couple of minutes. He said, well, it's just eroding stuff with a spark. And I'm like, Paul, that's not really helping me. No. Nope. You know, there's different varieties. So why don't we do one minute long videos, educating people, engineers, about different aspects of engineering. Um, great example was guys at SubCNC yeah. said to them about polygon turning. They came up with this great video, 60 seconds long, and it is, it's just a snapshot, but it's meant for engineers just to, oh yeah, I've, I actually know what, it, what we're doing here. And, but also people like apprentices, you know, they don't know, they might not know what the difference between a lubricant or a coolant is. 60 seconds, watch a video, nice Done. and simple. Done. Absolutely. Talking about learning, we have a guest today. Yes. Which is Richard from GW Martin. So lovely to have your company, Richard. Hello, hello, Lindsay. Hi there, Richard. Hi, Colin. How are you? I know you've got lots to talk about with us today, and I think you've got two main points. But uh, talking about education, apprenticeships. Yes, we uh, at GW Martin employ about 45 people, but five of those are apprentices. So over 10% of our staff is apprentices. This month we've got three graduating to full, uh, to full status coming out of their apprenticeships and, uh, and they're now ready to start on the shop working as a normal engineer, uh, setter, operator, programmer. So we're delighted that we're able to put something back into the business because that's important for our industry, getting the skills coming through. But I think ultimately there's still a problem with the whole system and certainly within our company. So what we've been trying to do, certainly what I've been trying to do over the last 12 months, is work out how we solve the problem. Now the problem is this. We at GW Martin are in the production manufacturing business, like many of our competitors. So we make components a bit like this, but we might make 2,000 of them, 5,000 of them, 10,000 of them. They're a production job. And so what happens is, if you set this up and start to run it, you tend to do that for some considerable time. And while you're doing that, of course, you're not learning, you're not putting back into your education the things that you learn when you're an apprentice. Our concern is that that could develop. So and no disrespect, these guys, you know, they'll get the component, they'll put it in the machine, press the button, and unload it a minute, two minutes later for four weeks straight on one batch. They're not learning anything else. They're going to get bored. They're going to get bored. Right. And I think that's important. Engineering needs to be exciting. You yeah. know, for kids to come in and learn like I did, like you, some of our other people did. You've got to learn, you know, you've got to have it exciting. So if it's exciting, they're going to want to do it. They want to come into the industry and we're going to keep the engineers coming through, which is what the country needs. So what we've decided to look at doing is start up an area where we're going to do short batch work. We're going to call it probably something like the rapid response area. And I think it, ne it meets the needs of the customer too. I'll give you an example. A customer was in with us a couple of weeks ago. He is subcontracting out 
£150,000 worth per year of parts similar to this. We've seen these before. Yeah, Most companies similar to can those. make these. One off, five off, ten yeah. off, twenty off. It costs him more money to go out to companies like us and say, how much to make ten of those? How much to make five of those? How much to make six of those? You're going to wait on quotations. He's going to wait for quotes. He's going to go around the houses. But he knows he's spending 150000 a year. So we've said, look, give us £150,000 a year and just send the parts. We'll make them for you. Make them, turn them over quick. Solution to his problem, perfect. To our problem of helping our apprentices get better training after they've come through, after they're fully skilled, and developing those skills, it works perfect for us as well. So he's winning, we're winning, there's a solution. I think there's going to be a lot of companies that have this as a problem. I really do. I think you know this isn't just yourself, your company. I think this is a solution to many other companies. And from uh, uh, the person's point of view who's giving you the parts, that's easy. That's done. One job done. They're going to have that con continuity, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're going to have one person they're going to speak to, and it's easy, yeah. isn't it? And as apprentices, yeah, really honing their skills, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to they're be great. They're going to be better than some of the guys that have been there years. Exactly. <laughs> so for me, we're, you know, if there are people out there that have got that kind of opportunity, have the same sort of problem with one of our customers, call us because we've got a solution and I think it's a solution that helps us, but it helps the industry in general because we're developing the skills of the young children. The kids come along. Just the investment in apprentices though, because you know, to have five out of 45 workforce is huge, huge amounts. Yeah, Excellent. it's a big responsibility and, uh, and we've got to make sure we look after that. Mm. You had another point you wanted to yes. make. Yes. So, of course, we've uh, been at uh, GW Martin 12 months now, so started to develop the business. Ah, 12 yeah. months. That reminds me, actually, your subscription's up with MTD Network. <laughs> That's not why we brought Richard here, though, is it? Yeah, it took 12 months. It clicked at the same time. Yeah. The first video. Yeah, we did a video with you ages ago. That's right. Well, we developed, uh, we, when I first came on board, I saw the assembly area that we used, but we used a very small part of it. And, and I felt then that, that there was an opportunity to grow and expand that. Now, since then, we've now taken on a three-year supply contract with a company just recently to supply for, for three years a fully assembled component. Um, I can't go into the details of component at the moment, but it's a fully assembled component. It's about 18 components in, in each assembly. Uh, we're making about five or 6,000 a year to start with. Uh, we're looking at other assemblies as well for the same client and, and that assembly program now is developing very, very quickly and that area that wasn't uh, getting used so much, we're already now talking about expanding it. What assembly work does for suppliers is it does everything. They can take 10, 15 components that they are buying instead of going to five or six different customers, different, different suppliers, and then when it all comes in, having to do it themselves, and then if it's not quite working, fit things together and, and blame someone else for this not working and that not working, they can just say, look, just make it, send it, put it in a box and deliver it. And we'll have that assembly ready to go when we want it, on time, on demand. And that's what we offer. And it's a unique service, I think, in the industry. You start. Oh, sorry. That, yeah, that ties in with the video that um, we did with Stuart at Subcon 2016. That's where right. He showed us one of the components you'd actually started. Yep. The whole process, anodizing through to final. Exactly. Boxing. Well, that that client ordered 650 assemblies. They they are assembling the whole uh, product now. It's the only part of their product that they just take out a box and bolt on, and and they're delighted. And yeah. so I think it's a great way of uh, of uh, offering a service to our customers. It makes their lives easier, so we're always trying to help. What can we do to help make our customers' lives easier? Offer a solution, and I think this is a great solution, and it's now growing, it's fantastic. You mentioned uh, to us uh, before today, you've got a, a system put in place because uh, you just invested three years into this is yes. so far, is that right? Well, we've, in, in, into the, into the, we've put in a new ERP system. We're just mm. in the process of rolling it out. We've been doing it for about a year, actually. Um, so we're 12 months into it. Uh, we've got uh, uh, the, the front end of the system and the back end of the system working perfectly. Uh, we're now just developing the middle part where the manufacturing takes place. But basically, if you take, uh, for an example, if you take the assemblies that we're making now, there's about 5,000, 6,000 assemblies of about 17 different components. Some we manufacture, some we buy in, and there are subcontract services as well, like plating, hardening, treatments and stuff, all, all around those 18, 25,000 components. So if we get an order for another 2,000 parts, we've got to order another 5,000 parts, but we don't know how many we got in stock, we don't know how many used, mm -hmm. how many went out. 
The ERP system takes care of all of that. It get, when, we, when we put everything on the system and run it through the shop, if we get an order for 2,000 components that have got 17 different parts in each, we just basically enter the sales order and it tells us exactly what's the stock on, on hand, how many we've got, how many we need to order, where we order them from and what the price is. That when it's all together and running smooth, it sounds like a great video opportunity, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're always welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, what's this I've been hearing about you and a 30-year-old beaver? The rooms aren't true, Lindsay, honestly. No, you've obviously seen Twitter, LinkedIn, the website. Andy at Bedford CNC, he's got some great new machines, but he's also got this trusty old beaver. Still works phenomenally. He was given some, a component to manufacture, huge, started off with a 100 kilo billet and then designed it, obviously manufactured it, two people to lift it onto the plate, but it's an absolutely awesome piece of work. So have a look at what he's been up to, it really is brilliant. But it's not just about Andy, there's other engineers obviously. We've had Richard from GW Martin, uh, Martin at PES. Now he's at Burnham on Crouch, he's recently made a component for the Eurofighter. So I'm gonna have to say this, that is definitely taking off. Oh. Yes, I know, dreadful. Um, we've got Empire, they've invested in a new, new machine, the Star SW20. Why have they done that? Because they've won some business from somebody else who were previously manufacturing two ops, so a bit of milling, a bit of turning. They've got it on this new Star machine, all in one operation, so it's a lot more efficient. Bring the cost down, they've won the business, so they're absolutely over the moon about that. Um, Cobra, Cobra Precision. Now, they're highlighted in our latest vodcast, but I got to drive a Bentley but also Morris Minor. Oh, nice. Both. Which one did you prefer? Um, the age-wise of Morris Minor was nearer me, the Bentley was more sophisticated, like me. So yes. I like them both, obviously. Both, for different Absolutely. reasons. Absolutely. Fantastic, you've been busy. Yes. Right, okay, you've got one more thing to announce. One more thing, hot off the press is the brand new website, which is coming soon. Ooh. Okay, we've got a new website. So if you want to get your business promoted by the right people, then the new website, our website, MTD Network, is the one to be looking out for.